Hello, football fans. Welcome to Crestview High School here in Convoy, Ohio, for week number two of the high school football campaign as the Hicksville Aces find themselves on the road in a non-conference matchup against the Knights of Crestview. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Murphy with Hicksville Community Television. Amy Murphy here with us running the camera, and we're glad to be with you on the road as we are going to bring you coverage of uh, week number two here on the high school football campaign. Week number one, not kind to the Aces as uh, they were waylaid by Archbold and uh, crushed by a score of uh, 36 to nothing, I believe the final score, 36, 37 to nothing. And uh, just, a, a, just a real punch in the gut to start off a season where the Aces were expected to do good things and they still are one of the more favorite teams in the GMC, but they gotta get through the non-conference part of the schedule first and it's not gonna get any easier tonight. This Crestview team has a lot of big young men on it, a lot of senior leadership and uh, and they're on their home turf, and the Aces will receive to get things started. And I should also mention, too, uh, that uh, we are in the auxiliary press box. We're located down at about the 20, 25-yard line of, the, uh, of one end of the field. So our visibility may be a little bit askew for some of the plays on the far end of the field. So we ask right. that you just bear with us as, uh, as we go through. So I will, didn't bring my binoculars to be able to zoom in on the player numbers, so <laughs> I'll do the best that my eyes can here. Aces return the ball out to the 30-yard line. That's where they'll start off this offensive stanza. First and 10, Jake Greer, the quarterback, wearing number 11, drops back into the shotgun as per usual. Hard count, and the Knights jump, and that'll be an easy five for the Aces. So that would be number 59, Braden Sellers, uh, their senior offense, defensive lineman, getting caught by the hard snap count. So that'll make it first and five, and they'll edge out to the 35-yard line. Greer, handoff. 12. That was uh, to uh, Mason Comiso. Comiso powering forward for a couple. We'll see how many they give him credit for. They'll give him credit for four. So out to the 39 where it'll be second and one. High snap and Greer hands it off once again. Powering forward, looking for that first down. Comiso with the carry again. And that'll move the chains. And so the Aces starting off well offensively here at Crestview tonight. We do want to thank everybody here at uh, Convoy Crestview High School for giving us the space, making us feel very welcome. Runs into some trouble. Greer still has the ball, not able to hand it off. He goes around the far end, manages to turn the corner and picks up, look, looks like about seven yards on the carry. So a bit of a busted play there. And Greer manages to make something out of nothing as he picks up eight. Makes up second, it makes it second and two. And again, we want to thank uh, everybody here at Crestview for giving us the space and making us feel very welcome, as they always do. Always a pleasure to come down here to cover football action. Back to the action right now. Greer takes a snap, hangs on to it himself again, and I think he might have got a yard, but he's going to come up short for moving the first down. Oh, they're going to give it to him on forward progress. He needed two, and he got maybe two and a half. So Jake Greer taking care of it himself on that offensive set of downs. First and ten now on the 48-yard line of the Knights. 
Dropping back, looking to pass. Greer puts it into the air. He's got a man open. It's caught and dropped by Parker Thiel. Two with the flag. Parker Thiel made the grab, and there's a flag on the play. So Parker Thiel. They put the flag away. Put the flag up. They're going to say that he made the catch. You know, Greer pitches back to Comiso. Comiso gets across the 10-yard line and down to about the six, the eight, excuse me. Comiso gets the pitch, gets him a couple more. That'll make it second and seven. So the Aces definitely in the red zone. They can get a first down if they get down to about the two-yard line. Second and seven. Greer, high snap. Again, hands it off to Camaso. Camaso straight up the middle. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Aces. So at least the Aces are going to avoid the shutout tonight as they uh, take the opening kick and march right down the field into the end zone to take a 6 to nothing lead. And uh, Greer's going to Attempt to kick the field goal. Tunis, the holder. Kick is up, and it's no good. Wide to the right. Score will remain 6 nothing. Aces with 9.26 to go here in our opening quarter. Cool night here in Convoy as this uh, unseasonably cold snap in late August continues. Today it's September. And that's right, I just reminded today is actually September 1st, so still it's cool for this time of year. A little cloudy and overcast. Maybe we can blame the hurricane. <laughs> Good crowd coming down from Hicksville, the Hicksville uh, Aces Pride Marching Band, also making the trip with the Aces football squad tonight. And the stand's starting to fill up a little bit with Knights fans as well. Like I said, it's football weather for sure. Everybody's breaking out the, the sweatshirts and the wraparound blankets. Travian Tunis wearing number 34. Getting set to kick off to the Knights. Oh, I take that back. It wasn't Travian that did the kicking. And that one goes out of bounds. I think that was Langham, number eight. Anyhow, kicks it out of bounds. They'll throw the flag and decent starting position for the Crestview Knights as a result. Gonna place the ball down. It looks like about the 35 yard line. Yep. That's where Crestview will have it first and 10. Man in motion. That's Dealey. Number 10, their quarterback is Drew Klein. Klein throws. It's caught. Like I said, Klein throws to Dealey, the junior running back, and moves the ball out to the 46-yard line for a first down. Klein, also a junior, so the Aces will be dealing with him next year as well. Klein holds on to the ball himself this time, and the Aces are ready for him. He gets brought down with little or no gain. they will make it second and ten. Yep, and the flag on the play. And oh, that hurts. Dead ball, personal foul on the aces. So that'll tack 15 onto it. So 
first down. Not sure what exactly the personal foul was, but it was after the play was blown dead, so that racks up 15. So that'll move the ball down to the 39-yard line of the Aces. Klein also working out of the shotgun. Puts the ball in the air, incomplete. Intended target, I think, was Schlagbaum, number seven. But that ball was either either he threw to the wrong spot or Schlagbaum ran to the wrong spot, but there was nobody there to catch that one. So second and ten. Riley Saylor runs in with the play. Number 23. They'll break huddle. Klein will drop back. Trevor Gibson, the split back beside him, number 22. Going to the air again. Nope, nothing doing. Klein has to scramble now. He's in trouble. He evades one pursuer. Klein trying to turn the corner and at least get some positive yardage. He manages to pick up a few before he's taken out of bounds by the Aces. So Klein... Light on his feet and running for his life. Picks up about three to make it third and seven. And again, they'll bring in the play from the sideline. Another one of their seniors, number 14, Charles Stefanek. And here we go. Third and seven for the Knights. Klein. Drops the ball. He's in trouble. Heavy pursuit, but he stays on his feet. He'll be brought down. I don't think he made it back to the original line of scrimmage. That'll bring up fourth down, and we'll see what the Knights want to do. They're in Aces territory at the 36-yard line, but, well, they've lost a couple. That takes them back to the 38. We'll be fourth and nine, and it looks like they're going to punt it away. Early on in the game. Schlagmom, number seven, puts his foot into it. And that one's going to go out the end of the end zone. That one actually won't even land until it's out the back of the end zone. So Grant Schlagmom puts his leg into it. The 6'2", 200-pound senior kicks it out of the end zone. So the Aces will get the ball back first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. 7.42 left to go here in the opening quarter. Again, week number two of the high school football campaign. The Aces coming in with an 0-1 schedule, taking a loss last week at the hands of Archbold. Looking to bounce back and get on the winning track here tonight. And then, and then hopefully they'll have a, another good outing for week number three. They'll be back at home and they'll be Entertaining Eden. Eden also suffering a loss last Friday. Pitch back to Comiso. Comiso on the sideline gets out to about the 45 yard line, maybe a little bit beyond that. They're going to give him forward progress out to about the 48. I thought they hit him at the 45 and knocked his feet out of bounds, but evidently he was able to stay inside the sideline. And Comiso with a nice catch and run. Gets the Aces out to their own 48-yard line, first and 10. Greer dropping back over the middle and off the hands of Parker Thiel incomplete. Thiel had a good look at the ball. Probably should have came up with that one, but sometimes the hardest, time, hardest, hardest place to catch a ball is when it gets you right in the hands like that. So second and 10 now on the incomplete pass. Aces will reset. Greer, again, a quick hitter out. And it is caught. And I think that is uh, Langham, number eight. Yep, Braden Langham. Makes the grab and takes the ball all the way down to the 31-yard line. Another big catch and run for the Aces as the passing game has been working pretty well for Hicksville on this particular series of downs. 
Greer puts it into the air again. He's going to over. Oh, I guess it is caught. What a nice catch. Parker Thiel makes the grab and somersaults flag. down at about the five-yard line, but there's flag. a flag on the play. So we'll wait for the official word. It's near the uh, line of scrimmage where the flag was thrown. The aces are coming back. And that's going to be against Hicksville for an ineligible man downfield. So somebody went a little too far down the field before the ball was thrown. That'll back the aces up. And move, their, move the ball back to the 36-yard line, where it'll be first and 15. So that's better than a hold. I thought for sure when they threw that, it was going to probably be some kind of a hold near the center of the line. So only five yards rather than 10. Greer hangs onto the ball himself, and he's going to be taken down behind the line of scrimmage. They were waiting for Jake that time. He got wrapped up almost right away as soon as he got the snap and brought down. It looks like that'll probably lose another yard or two. Nope, they're going to say he managed to battle his way back to the original line of scrimmage. So second and 15 out at the 36-yard line. Greer again, quick lateral out, caught. And carried down to about the 27-yard line. I think that was Tunis that made the grab. 20. Yep, Peyton Tunis, number 20. Thank you, Amy. I really, <laughs> I can't say how much I appreciate the extra set of eyes that Amy has given me tonight as we are kind of at an odd angle. But we have a really nice facility here. Nice press box that we are located in. Greer rolling out. Unloads. And intended receiver was number nine, Logan Sanderson. He had a Crestview Knight right on his back, but, but he managed to just get the ball and not the player, so no flags thrown. And that'll make it fourth and six now from the 30, excuse me, from the 27 yard line. 535 to go, and the aces aren't showing any signs of dropping back to punt from this part of the field. Greer, again, a nice, easy catch. And that is Comiso taking it down to about the five yard line. So Comiso, when they needed six yards, gets a lot more from that, and Comiso takes it all the way down to the four-yard line where it'll be first and goal for the Aces and a chance to go up by many by, his, by 12 here. Greer hangs on to the ball, powers forward, gets down to about the two. They're going to mark his knee down at the three. So a yard for Jake Greer, second and goal from the three-yard line. Greer, flag. flag thrown, and it's going to be a false start against the Aces. Back them up five. That'll make it second and goal now from the eight-yard line. So somebody moved a little bit too soon. So, so far, the Aces have managed to rack up, by my count, about 25 yards in penalties. 15 yards for a dead ball personal foul and five for an illegal receiver downfield. Now five for a false start. Greer pitching it out to Comiso. Comiso turning the corner. Back inside the five yard line, back down to the four. And actually they're going to give him forward progress to the three. So Third now, third down now, and goal from the four-yard line. So the Aces get a couple more cracks yet. Greer.
career. Reverse handoff and into the end zone goes Braden Langham. Langham with the three yard scamper for six. So Langham scores the touchdown, second of the night for Hicksville. Comes at 351 left in the first quarter. And the Aces will get another chance at a conversion here. And we'll see whether they're going to kick it for one or if they're going to try to run it in to get it back to a, make it a 14-point game. They're going to go for two. Greer rolling out, in trouble, looking, looking, gets it away, and nothing doing. Greer was yeah, I, at about the just about the line of scrimmage when he threw it away, threw it into the end zone. It was out of the grasp of his receiver. I, I think Jake might have been better suited just tucking it in and maybe diving towards the end zone at that point. But either way, the two-point conversion fails. The score remains 12 and nothing as the Aces increase their lead over the Crestview Knights with 3.51 left to go in the first quarter. And so far, the Knights have not been able to take advantage of their edge in size and in experience. So we'll see what they come up with. Uh, they get ready to get on offense for the second time yet this evening. As the lights come on here at Knights Field. Again, from Langham on the ground, and the Knights fall on it at about the 36-yard line. So they keep it on the ground for this kickoff, and then they don't uh, kick it out of bounds. But the funny thing is that <laughs> the Knight, as they as they squibbed it across, the, the Knights are actually a yard better in field position than they are than they were at the last time. They started there after the first kick at the 35, after the Aces accidentally kicked the ball out of bounds, and they'll begin this at their own 36-yard line. 3.48 to go, first quarter action. Again, the Aces on top of the Crestview Knights early, 12-0. Snap back to quarterback Klein. Klein airing it out. There's nobody there. And... Flag on the play, and that might be offensive pass interference because it looked like number seven, Grant Schlagbaum, was tied up with the Aces player and pulled him down. So we'll see what the officials are going to make of it because I think that the – I think oh, they're going to wave it off. Okay. Because it looked to me – as if the Aces defender had gotten some separation and Schlagbaum for the Knights was afraid that he might be able to pick that pass off and he grabbed him by the... They didn't actually make so that's what the, that's what the officials are saying. That, nope, they just got tangled up with each other, so there was no foul. So they will pick that one up and it'll be second and 10 for the Knights. Ball remains at the 36-yard line. Klein hangs on the ball's knocked loose it's on the turf and the Aces have it what a turnaround of fortune for the Aces Klein got the snap and started to go back and got it knocked out of his hands by one of the Aces defenders it hit the turf and one of the Hicksville defenders following up dives on the ball and it's the first turnover of the night the Aces recover the fumble and they'll have it first and ten on the 29-yard line of the Crestview Knights. So the Aces swarming defense pays off this time, and and the Aces, yeah, evidently Coach Smith must have had an in-depth uh, seminar with the uh, with the Aces after the opening week loss because they're really coming to town here tonight. Greer airs it out, and again. People are saying, looking for the flag, but 
again, Parker Thiel was headed for the ball. The defender was in front of him and stopped to look at where the ball was at, and Parker ran into him when he stopped. So, again, incidental contact. Second and ten aces. Looking to convert and capitalize on the fumble. Tunis makes the grab. Flag on the play. Tunis still on his feet. He's got first down yardage, but we'll see what the flag is all about here. Thrown on the near sideline right in front of us. Tunis got it down to the 19 or the 20 yard line. So he almost a first down, and it's going to be against the Aces. So erase that out of your scorebook. So that'll back the Aces up. 10. They're going to put the ball down at the 38-yard line. So not quite a 10-yard penalty, 9. So second and 19. As they mark back from the spot of the foul. Greer, quick hitter out to Sanderson, but Sanderson is hit and taken down almost immediately with minimal gain. Picks up about six, make it third and 13. Ace is back on the line. Greer directing a little traffic. Takes a snap, drops back. Greer fakes the pass, hangs onto it. Jake takes off, heads downfield. First down yardage. He's breaking free and into the end zone. Touchdown. And I'm not seeing any flags on that play. So Jake Greer takes it in. From 30-plus yards out, quarterback keeper into the end zone to make it 18 to nothing as the Aces are really firing on all eight cylinders offensively here tonight so far in the game. I'm going to go for the single point. Greer gets the ball up, and it's going to be short. That one was down the middle and was set to split the uprights. It falls just about two, two, three feet short of the crossbar. So the conversion attempt fails and the score remains 18 to nothing. Aces working on the shutout themselves this week. 2.15 still to go here in the first quarter. You can tell they've been throwing the ball a little bit longer, a little bit more often tonight as first quarter is... First quarter is a little bit lengthier this this evening than it was last week. And they're doing a speed up offense. What? And like I said, yep, as Amy points out, the Coach Smith has them pretty much in the no huddle. They have a uh, they have a system. Uh, you, if you see on the sideline, you may notice that if you come to any of the games, where they have several players holding up different colored cards or piece of paper pieces of paper, so uh, they do a lot of their play calling using these colored cards to allow them to use the uh, the hurry up, uh, no huddle offense. Again, Travian Tunis queuing it up for Langham to kick it off. Scooped up. Still on his feet, and he'll be brought down at about the 32-yard line. Oh, same place. Yeah. So this time, it works out a little bit better for the Aces as they don't get out past the 35-yard line, and the Knights will start this one at about the 32, 33-yard line. Looks like they're going to mark it at the 33. Klein. Checking things over. 
takes a snap. Klein dropping back to throw. Laterals it, and it's a little bit too far ahead of the intended receiver, Trevor Gibson. So Gibson can't quite get to the ball, a little out of his reach. And will make it second and ten. And I guess it was a forward pass, so we should call it a screen and not a lateral. 2.04 left to go in the opening quarter. It's second and 10 for the Crestview Knights. They're looking at an 18-point deficit here early on in their home field and trying to get something going here offensively for the first time tonight. Klein gets it out, seven. caught by number seven, Schlagbaum. Schlagbaum gets some positive yardage, but looks like he might have picked up about five. They're going to give him four. Third and six now from the 41-yard line for Crestview. Clock continues to roll. Minute 40 left to go here in our opening quarter. Stefanik brings the play in from the sideline. The Knights break huddle, and here we go, third and six. Low snap, but Klein handles it, puts it in the air, and he just floats it about three feet above everybody's head. Nobody had a chance of catching that one. Fourth down, and it's another four and out for the... Uh, for the Knights, as they're going to bring out their punter. Their punter is number seven, Schlagbaum. As again, they're stopped before they get into the Aces half of the field. Schlagbaum dropping back. Stutter step, puts his foot into it. And it looks like that one's going to go out of bounds. And we'll see where they where they mark it. And they're going to say 29, 30 yard line. They're going to put it on the looks like you know right on the 30 yard line. Yep. First and ten aces. Just a shade over a minute to go here in our opening quarter. And Hicksville, with an 18-point lead, back on offense again. Seeing what they can do here in the last minute of the first quarter. Greer hands it off. And Camiso will pick up a few. So it looks like about a three-yard scamper to make it second and seven. Clock continues to roll. 30 seconds left to go here before the quarter break. Fakes the handoff, and Greer hangs on to it himself. He moves sideways, and he gets taken down. I don't think he got much in the way of positive yardage on the carry. They'll give him a couple, third and five. That might be the last play of the first quarter as we're down below 10 seconds now. Third and five from the 35-yard line when play resumes in quarter number two because that is the end of the first quarter, we've played the first 12 minutes, and uh, quite honestly, I think we're a little bit surprised. Uh, the Aces have come out, and they were ready to play football tonight, and they have handled the Crestview Knights at least so far, and they go into the second quarter with a commanding 18 to nothing lead here at Knight Stadium. Well, as they get ready to switch sides of the field and get the second quarter underway, we're going to take some time here to say a big thank you and an especially big thank you tonight to the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville, Ohio. 
Uh, they are our football broadcast underwriters for the 2017 season. And uh, most especially, the underwriting support of the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships is what makes it possible for us to uh, be on the road and to uh, go with the Aces and travel with them to all of their away games. And uh, tonight, again, we are grateful. Crestview has this really nice auxiliary press box that we are able to be in because otherwise we would be up on the roof on this very cold, windy night, shivering. So, again, we appreciate uh, the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships, Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick and Jim Schmidt Ford, making it possible for us to be on the road with the Aces. And we invite you to check out uh, their website, jimschmidtauto.com. Check out the complete inventory of both dealerships. Greer takes a snap as the second quarter is underway. Flag thrown in the backfield, backfield and uh, Greer is uh, thrown down at about the 39-yard line. And we'll see uh, the early indication is that it's going to be against the Aces. Like I said it was back, and it will be a hold against the Aces, so that's going to back him up. And it'll be 10 yards from the spot of the foul, so that's going to take him back, and it's going to make it uh, third and about 20 yards to go here. They're going to move all the way back to the 20-yard line. So the Aces, the holding call, backs them way up, and they're going to be facing a third and 20. 11.50 to go before halftime. Greer and company's got one wide receiver out towards us, three on the far side. Greer takes the snap, drops back, looking downfield. Get He's got a scramble. Jake throws it out of bounds wisely to bring up fourth down. And a flag thrown, and they're going to give him intentional grounding. Yep. He wasn't out of the pocket, and there was no receiver, so intentional grounding. And that'll be loss of down. They'll back it up, and the Aces are going to have to punt it now. That's going to take it half the distance to the goal. So that's going to move the ball way back to the four-yard line. So Greer is going to really have to have, we need a good kick out of Jake right now. He's uh, standing about uh, two yards from the end line. Greer manages to get his foot into it. Takes a nice bounce, recovered at the 50-yard line by number 14 for the Knights. And he's off to the races, cutting back. And uh, finally, Stefanik is uh, brought down at the 11-yard line. So Charlie Stefanik makes the grab out around the 50, and he uh, just takes off like a shot, gets down to the 11-yard line, and that's where the Knights will set up shop, their best field position of the night by far in the red zone, first and 10 from the 11-yard line. So this is going to be the first real test. test of the Aces defense this evening. Brief official timeout. They can get everything situated. And here we go. Klein trying to get that zero off the scoreboard for his team on this possession. Rolling out. Keeps it himself. Klein cuts up field and gets down to about the six yard line. That'll make it second and five. Reset. Klein comes up under center. Hands off. Nothing doing. I think that was Gibson with the carry. Number 22. Gibson gets about a yard. He'll take it down to the four-yard line to make it third and three. 
Crestview can get another first down at the one-yard line. Stefanik, after making that great run, brings in the play from the sideline. Pretty sure there's going to be four down territory for the Knights. Klein under center. Pitches back. Full head of steam diving towards the end zone and in for the touchdown, Derek Dealey. The, scene, the junior running back takes it in from four yards out. And Dealey gets the Knights on the scoreboard at last. 18 to 6, 9.44 left here before halftime. And they're going to go for the extra point kick. Stefanik is the holder. And the kick is good. That's Dylan Hicks, the kicker, by the way, senior. Splits the uprights, and well, we'll see. That might make a difference down the road a ways. The extra points, uh, so far the Aces have not been able to make any of their conversions. So, again, 9.44 to go here in the first half, and it's the Aces leading 18-7. to Their lead cut to 11 now with the score by the Knights, and Hicksville will get ready to get the ball back and go back on offense here. And so far, they've been doing quite well offensively, so. Um, does Hicksville know which side of the field they're supposed to be on? I think they've got it figured out now. He switched sides. They came out initially, <laughs> so. And it looks like it's going to be Thiel, Tunis, and Comiso, the the deep men for the Aces. So again, their kicker number 74, Dylan Hicks. Tees it up. It's the first time we've seen him kick off tonight. Aside from the opening of the game, they'll squib it on. It'll be picked up at the uh, six-yard line, or excuse me, at the 30-yard line by number six. That was Gipple. So Gipple gets the ball for the Aces, and Hicksville will set up shop at their 30-yard line, first and 10. So Jake Greer and company back on the field and seeing if they can answer the Knights score. Greer. Batted away. That'll be incomplete. And again, that was their, that was their kicker. That was uh, Dylan Hicks who Came out of nowhere and just slapped that ball to the turf. So nothing doing there with the quick hitter for the Aces. So some adjustments being made by the Knights defense. Greer and company reset. Jake takes the snap, drops back again, looking to pass. In the air, throws it into traffic, and it's picked off. Number 24 with the interception, that's Derek Dealey. Dealey makes the INT and returns the ball to the 26-27 yard line, where it'll be first and 10 nights. So just like that, another turnover, only this time it goes the Crestview Knights way, and it'll give them some decent field position and an opportunity to see if they can capitalize on an ace turnover. 9.27 to go here in the first half. Crestview with a chance to cut into that Aces lead a little bit deeper. Back on offense and back on defense for Hicksville. 
Klein works out of the shotgun, pitches it back. Again, Dealey, number 24, with the carry out to the 30-yard line. Gain of about four. I make it second and six. Clock continues to roll. I'm not sure what happened there. Half the line moved, half the line didn't move. It'll be a false start, obviously. Back them up by five. Somebody must not have heard the snap count because they said about half of the Knights took off and the other half were still in their stances. And the Aces were kind of looking confused. So back them up five and it'll be second and 11 now for Crestview. And that'll move them back to the 36-yard line of the Aces. And another whistle. And, okay, quick repositioning of the ball. Klein under center. Quick hit, caught by number three. Down to about the 27-yard line. That's Wade Sheets that made the grab. Sheets gets down to about the 27-yard line, as we said. Now make it third and four for the Knights. Klein dropping back again. Again puts it in the air, looking for number three. Player broken up by Tunis. Nice defensive play by Peyton Tunis as he reaches up at the last minute and bats the ball out of the receiver's hands. No flag on the play. So, again, good solid defense by the Aces, and that brings up fourth down for Crestview. Fourth and four, 27-yard line. They're looking to the sideline, but I got a feeling they may go for it. They're down by 11. Here's a chance for them if they can pick up four yards, get a fresh set of downs. And like I said, and they'd like nothing better than to cut the lead to four here with another touchdown. Klein dropping back on fourth down, puts the ball in the air. It's through the hands of his intended receiver, Grant Schlagbaum, Schlagbaum rather. Incomplete, and they'll turn it over on downs. So the Aces get the ball back. It'll be first and 10. They'll take over on their own 27-yard line. 7.40 to go before halftime. The Aces have got a lot of turf to cover if they want to get back into the end zone and pick up some more points before halftime. Nice's last offensive drive brought up short by the intercepted pass. Greer pitches out to Comiso. And Comiso is going to get taken back way back at about the 18 yard line. Comiso. He pitched it back to Mason at the last minute, and Comiso headed down and was trying to figure out a way to cut up field, and it looks like his feet might have went out from underneath him, and so he gets brought down with a nine-yard loss. But this hit quarter, the Aces aren't doing a hurry yeah. up. They're back there, slow down. Like Second and 19. There's no hurry up. Greer hangs on to the ball, dives out close to the 25-yard line in 24. The Aces, 6.43. Greer, on a third and 13, throws it, and it's picked off again. 
And that's going to be a pick six into the end zone. Intended receiver was uh, Sanderson. And it's picked off by Wade Sheets, number three, and Sheets returns it into the end zone for the score. So two offensive tries and two interceptions on Greer. This one really burns. It's a pick six for the Knights as they make it a five-point game, 18-13, 6-24, and the extra point pending. They convert this, they'll have cut that 18 point lead down to four here in this second quarter. The first quarter was all Hicksville. They finished the first 12 minutes, 18 to nothing. But Crestview has awoken offensively here in the second quarter, and it's been all, the, all nights. Yep, that one's no good. So it'll stay a five point game. Wide to the left on the kick. But again, Crestview, 13 unanswered here in the second quarter to make it a ball game. 18-13 with 6.24 left in this first half. And the Aces getting, re <laughs> are getting, ready to, let's say they're getting ready to get back on offense. And so far in this second quarter, the offense has been kind of tough for the Aces. So we'll see what happens this time around. See what Coach Smith has up his sleeve for this offensive stanza. Again, the Knights will get ready to kick it off. Hicks, number 74, is their kicker. And again, Peyton Tunis, Mason Comiso, and Parker Thiel with three deep men for the Aces, although so far the Crestview Knights have sort of taken a page out of the Aces playbook, and they've kind of... Kept it on the ground with the squib kicks so far. Now get ready to get the ball back. Here we go. They put it in the air this time. Thiel makes the grab. Thiel picks it up and gets across the 25. Parker's still on his feet. Across the 30, out towards the 35-yard line. So a nice return from Parker Thiel. I think they're going to mark him at the 34. And that's where the Aces will have it first and 10. Six sixteen left to go in the half. And Coach Smith talking things over with his offense on the sideline. The Knights defense on the field and ready to go. Here come the Aces. They haven't been as active offensively in this second quarter, so they'd like to get back on track here. Two interceptions on two possessions don't help. Quick handoff, and that's Comiso who takes it out to the 40-yard line. Gain of about six. Now they're going to give him five and put him down at the 39-yard line. See if the Aces keep it on the ground for a little bit here. Again, a handoff. And again, Comiso. Looks like down to about the 44. So that's going to be... Let's see, I guess they're going to be about a yard short. Make it third and a long one or third and two. And there's a conference going on with the officials, so I'm not sure just what that is about. There's Oh, I think that they wanted, the Knights wanted to substitute and they need to make sure that they were able to do so legally. So third and one for the Aces. Um, and Greer gets the snap off. 
Gets the handoff off, and that should be good enough for a first down. I was watching the 25-second uh, the clock and starting to get a little nervous there. But Greer cut it about as close as you can and managed to get the, get the ball snapped. And flags erupting at the end of the play. So we're going to wait on the word from the officials, and we'll see how things are with the Crestview Knight player who is down on the turf. <music> Working on a Crestview Knights player who went down at the end of that play as Greer had a great run from scrimmage down near the end zone. He pops back up. That's number 24, and that's uh, Derek Dealey, who's been one of their game one of their game makers so far tonight, a couple of big plays to his credit, including that uh, pick six return and the interception of Greer's pass. So good to see him back up. He'll have to sit out for at least a play. And now we'll wait. And the penalty was against the, uh, the Knights. The, all right. So there was a play. So... The initial foul was against the Knights at the end of the play, and then the Aces committed an infraction right after that. Yep. They'll offset, so eliminate that 48-yard uh, run by Greer, and uh, we'll go back first and 10 at the 50-yard line again. So, so yeah, we'll... Said it looked like it, looked like it might have been a... I, I couldn't really tell, but it looked like it might have been some kind of an improper tackle on Greer. And then I'm not sure what happened. One of the aces committed an infraction right after Greer went down because that's when the second flag went out and they were pointing at the aces defenders. So they'll offset and we'll redo it. We'll just pretend it didn't happen. Greer first and 10 on the 50 yard line. 4.53 to go before halftime, Greer. Again, holds on to it, but he's not going to get 48 hour yards this time. <laughs> Greer might have got back to the line of scrimmage, second and 10. But he was wrapped up right away. Clock continues to roll under four and a half minutes to go here before halftime. Greer fakes the pass, looks over. It's got a man open. It's caught over on the far sideline, I believe. Number eight, Langham, makes the grab. First down, aces. It was over on the far side. We couldn't tell whether he trapped it or he actually catch it, but uh, the officials have a better look at it than us, so they say a catch. It's a catch. So Langham gets him down to the 38-yard line and buys him a fresh set of downs. The Ace is back in business. Greer takes the snap. Jake hands it off. Comiso spinning, still on his feet. Comiso picks up some yardage. So Comiso... Scampers for about seven to make it second and three. They get down to the 31-yard line. Another Greer fakes the handoff to Kama, so Jake hangs on to the ball himself. Greer still on his feet, winding his way towards the end zone. He dives in for the touchdown. Oh, there's a flag on the play. Greer dove towards the end zone. One official raised his hands for a touchdown. Another saying he was down at the one-yard line. And a flag on the play. And we'll see what the aces are moving back. And it's going to be a hold against the Hicksville team. So the aces are going to get backed up again. So another great run by Jake Greer. That's going to be negated by penalties. And the aces' penalties are really starting to rack up here this evening. 
So we'll see where they're going to put the ball at the 28-yard line where it will be first and 10. So, so Greer now has 28 yards to work with. Again, a handoff to Camaso. Camaso powering down a little closer as the Aces keep it on the ground and hammer away a little bit. Down to the 23 yard line to make it second and five. And Greer, again, hanging on to the ball himself. Jake working his way through traffic, heading towards the sideline. He'll be brought down, and that should be good enough for a first down. So Greer with the quarterback keeper. It wasn't one of the spectacular runs that we've seen in the last few minutes, but he picks up uh, a few, gets down to the 15-yard line where it'll be first and 10 aces. And again, Greer. Hanging on to the ball himself. Another quarterback keeper for Jake Greer. And uh, that'll pick up six. Down to the nine-yard line, second and four. As we get down below two minutes before halftime, Aces are going to see if they can punch it in here before the intermission. Greer. Again, a quarterback keeper, Greer spinning away. He breaks a couple of tackles and gets down to the one-yard line. They'll undo the pile. It'll be first and goal, aces at the one, the minute 32 here in the first half. Greer hangs on. And into the end zone for the touchdown. Jake Greer, one-yard touchdown run. That makes it 24-13. to 13. The Aces back up by 11 now with 121 left in the half. So we'll see what Coach Smith wants to do, if they're going to line it up and go for two, or if they're going to try to uh, kick the extra point. And it looks like they're going to go for two here to see if they can make it a 26-13 game. Greer, pass, batted down, no good. The conversion fails, and it remains 24-13. Aces hang on, or re Aces reestablish the 11-point lead with 121 left to go before halftime. So the Knights are going to get the ball back, and uh, they're going to get a chance to work on their two-minute or less offense here. And we'll see what they can come up with offensively and what the Aces are going to do defensively. This would be the time, if ever, for the Aces to get a good onside kick and be able to recover. This would be the time. As I said, we are in the auxiliary press box, so... We're not sure whether we're going to be able to bring you the halftime entertainment or not from where we're located. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get the bands or not. We'll give it a shot and see how it turns out. But if when you watch this you don't see the bands, the reason will be because we couldn't get a good angle from our press box, our auxiliary press box location. Low hopper, caught. And brought down at about... About the 35-yard line, about the 45-yard line. It was number 34. That was Logan Gerardo with the catch and the return. Yeah, it's just us here all the way up. <laughs> Sorry. So we're in the – saying, when everybody asks, where's, where's the Hicks TV press box, they're all saying – or all, where's the Hicksville press box? They're saying the auxiliary press box where we are, so – People coming in all night going, where, where is everybody? And we're like, no, no, the, the main press box. Yeah, Klein dropping back, puts the ball in the air. He's got a man open, knocked away. 
Nice defensive play by Aces. Number 12, which was uh, Camaso batting that ball away. Second and 10 now. Ball remains on the 44-yard line. Minute 10 to go before halftime. Klein out of the shotgun, second and 10. Dropping back again, looking to put it in the air. Bounced off the hands and incomplete. The intended receiver, Caden Short. Short hit his hands, and it did the worst thing it can do as far as a coach is concerned, and that's pop up in the air with a couple of aces in the vicinity, but neither Hicksville player was able to catch the ball before it hit the turf, so incomplete and third and 10 now for the Knights. Only takes four seconds off of the clock. So 106. Klein, again, rolling out, looking downfield. Throw, caught. Number three. Wade Sheets makes the catch and goes down at the Aces 46-yard line. That'll be good enough for the first down. So first and 10 from the Aces 46. Another quick hit and another catch by Sheets and Sheets brought down. He stays in bounds at the 42 yard line and timeout Crestview. So 44.5 seconds. It'll be second and uh, about two yards to go when we get back into action. The ball down at the 38-yard line of the Aces. 24-13, the Aces with the 11-point lead, and the Knights looking to see if they can make something happen here offensively and get a few more points on the scoreboard before we take the break at halftime. And uh, yeah, we have been <laughs> we've been here. Uh, for a little over an hour now as uh, this regardless of the game time on the clock uh, we've been playing this first half for an hour and six minutes at this point the Knights band making their way down on the track uh, getting ready for the halftime show the Aces pride will be up first and they're also getting ready off to our right Both teams will break huddle, and we'll get ready to go in the second and It's a second and a long one, about a yard and a half that they need to go. Klein out of the shotgun. Klein hangs on to it himself, and Klein is brought down. And it should be enough for the first down. And I think they kept him in too. The clock will continue to roll, but they will stop it long enough to move the down markers. So first and 10 from the 35-yard line, and they start the clock, and Klein's ready to go, takes the snap. Quick throw, caught, and brought down. That's going to be just shy of the first down marker, and I think that was Caden Short that made the grab, so it'll be second and one from the 25-yard line. Well, they're going to give him a first down. So first and 10. Another quick throw, and that one's incomplete. 23.6 seconds. It'll be second and 10 for the Knights. And again, the ball will remain at the Aces 25-yard line. Intended receiver was Riley Saylor. Number 23 couldn't keep his hands on it. Still two timeouts remaining for the Knights, and the Aces can stop the clock three times if they choose. Twenty three point six seconds. Klein out of the shotgun. Snap. Klein drops back. Looking. He's in trouble. Klein scrambling. Gets away from one defender. Puts the ball in the air and it is knocked to the turf. Incomplete. No flag on the play. Intended for seven. The intended receiver number seven, Grant Schlagbaum, but broken up by Van Atta. 
Mason got in there and knocked the ball down 15.6 seconds to go now. And the ball remains on the 25-yard line, third and 10. Here we go. Knights needing 25 yards to get into the end zone. Klein puts the ball in the air, nearly intercepted. The intended receiver was Riley Saylor, but uh, it was Logan Sanderson that nearly made that catch for the Aces. Fourth down with 11.4 seconds. Obviously, four down territory. So it's all or nothing on this play. Either the Knights are going to, the Knights are either going to score, they're going to get a fresh set of downs, or the Aces are going to take over with less than 10 seconds to go before halftime. If they get the first down, look for an immediate timeout from the Knights' sideline. Klein gets the snap, drops back, looking downfield. He's going for all the marbles. He's got a man number three. It's caught in the end zone. Wade Sheets makes the grab in the corner of the end zone, comes down inbounds. Touchdown Crestview, 3.6 seconds. What a great drive. They had under two minutes and they marched it down the field and into the end zone. Give credit where credit is due, and that makes it a 24-19 game. And again, they're going to see if they can kick the extra point to cut that lead to four. Hicks back. Snap down. Kick is up. And good. They split the uprights, and Dylan Hicks makes it a 24-20 game. So the Aces are going to get the ball back with 3.6 seconds and most likely are either going to run out the clock or if they have any time left, I imagine they'll just take a knee. And they're going to go into the halftime locker room with a four-point lead after leading by 18 at the end of the first quarter. But the Knights, give them credit. Like I said, they had, did not give up, and they have played tough football, and they battled back, and they've made this into a football game here in this second quarter. Aces onto the field, getting ready to receive the kickoff. The Knights break huddle, and we'll see whether they're going to squib it and burn up some time or whether they're going to put their leg into it. Try to pin him back deep just to make sure. Tunis, Thiel, and Camaso, the deep men, might want to keep the ball out of their hands. They're all three capable runners. Hicks getting the ball teed up. Drop back. And Hicks is going to line it right down the center of the field. Scooped up by Parker Thiel. Thiel, little stutter move, still on his feet. Thiel still's got the ball. And uh, that'll be it. Time expires. Thiel gets out near midfield. He returns out to about the 49-yard line, but that's the end of the first half. And at halftime. Our score, it's the Hicksville Aces leading the Crestview Knights down here at Convoy, Ohio. 24 to 20, the halftime score. I'm going to take a break. Of course, we've got halftime entertainment from the Aces Prides and the Marching Knights. And, of course, I'll be back with all the second half play-by-play. -play, so stay with us right here on Hicks TV. 